The problem from this video can be downloaded at accountingworkbook.com. If you go to the website, click the PDF link and you can download a copy of this and all of my problems for yourself. Now, if you check the website and you click on videos, you'll see there are more videos than those I've listed publicly on YouTube. You can see that there's uh, every problem covered in the workbook has either a public video or a members only video. If you'd like access to the members only video, just click the join button beneath the video player on YouTube. All right, let's jump into the problem. Let's take a look at problem 31A. This has us exploring five different kinds of adjustments or adjusting journal entries. The first kind we're going to explore is prepaids. So the most common type of prepaid expense is for prepaid insurance. And when we talk about prepaids in general, and there's prepaid insurance, prepaid rent, supplies, those are all common prepaids you'll see in an intro financial accounting course. All we're talking about is a cost that you've paid for in advance. And you think, oh, costs, those are expenses. And the costs are expenses, but a cost you paid in advance actually has the characteristics of not an expense, but an asset. And why an asset and not an expense? Because you're gonna benefit from having paid the cost in the future. It's a future economic benefit is in our textbook definition of the word asset. So if I pay for my insurance today and I'm gonna benefit from it for, from it for the next year, that is an asset, that's something of value, right? You should want to have an insurance policy that's gonna last you the next year. That's valuable to you. And so because of it, it's actually an asset. Now, as you use the as you use the asset up, as you know the months go by and you're using your insurance up, then it becomes an expense. And uh, I think this example will illustrate that point nicely. So here we go. ABC Company purchases a one-year insurance policy on June first, twenty twenty-four, for eighteen hundred dollars cash. Okay. Uh, oh, and record the entry for the purchase and for the year-end adjustment. Okay, fair enough. So we buy some insurance for cash on June 1st, 2024. So let's date that June 1st, 2024. Cash changed hands and cash is decreasing. So going back to our module two stuff, credit cash, right? So I'll leave room for a debit here, but we're gonna credit cash for $1,800. And let me put little headings up here for my debits and my credits. The debit here is normally when you pay a cost, we would debit insurance expense or some expense related to the cost. But here we know insurance is something we buy in advance and use over time. So we're not gonna wanna debit an expense, we're gonna wanna debit an insurance asset. And the name of that asset, again, cause this thing's gonna last for a year, so it's, it's valuable. Uh, the name of the asset is prepaid insurance, prepaid X, right? Prepaid rent, prepaid insurance. Um, and that's $1,800 is the value of that asset. Okay, so we have this $1,800 insurance asset. So when I'm listing my current assets, I would list it in that list, you know, with supplies and uh, accounts receivable and all those other current assets that we might have. So, okay, we've got our prepaid insurance on the books. So a few months go by and now it's December 31st, 2024, and I wanna prepare my financial statements. Uh, and so I'm listing out all my assets and of course prepaid insurance is among them. And right now I would show $1,800 of prepaid insurance. But I gotta ask you, do I have $1,800 worth of prepaid insurance left? And the answer is no. I've used up a bunch of my insurance because I bought this on June, right? So I had insurance coverage for June, July, August, September, October, November, December. I've had insurance coverage for seven months of the year. And this is a one year insurance policy. Seven months of that has expired or been used up. So I've got to record the fact that my insurance policy has lost seven months of its value. So here's how I do it. I have this $1,800 insurance policy and I've used up seven twelfths of it. Again, uh, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, that's seven months. It's a one year or 12 month insurance policy. So seven twelfths of this insurance policy has expired. Just pulling out my calculator here. 18, oh dear, come on you. Touchscreen is like 
really finicky right now. Eight. Holy mackerel. 1,800 times 7 divided by 12 is 1050. I've used up 1050 of my insurance. 1050 of my insurance has expired. I need to record that. I need to say, okay, $1,050 of this $1,800 insurance policy is gone. So the journal entry here, debit insurance expense. Ten fifty, and the debit to insurance expense is just to say, this insurance is no longer with me. This uh, this insurance has expired. This is the insurance cost for the period. So ten fifty is the insurance cost. We credit prepaid insurance, and the reason we credit prepaid insurance is we're saying the value of this insurance asset, eighteen hundred dollars, has fallen because I've I've used a bunch of it up. It's expired. So I credit prepaid insurance ten fifty. This wasn't asked for, but it's very interesting to know how much insurance do I have left, right? We've used seven months. We have five months worth of insurance left. I would expect $750 of insurance to be left. And let's, let's just take a look at this. Prepaid insurance. It was a debit of $1,800, right? When we started, uh, we credited it for $1,050. 1800 minus 1050 big side minus the small side yes we have 750 dollars of insurance left over and that should math out i should be able to say well it's an 1800 dollar policy i have five months left like i have january february march april may it ends on june 1st 2025 so five more months left 1800 times 5 twelfths it should be and is $750. So that's how much insurance I have left, but I don't record a journal entry debit prepaid insurance 750 or something like that. I'm just commenting on it. I'm saying as a result of these two entries, I have the proper insurance expense. I have the proper amount left in prepaid insurance. I have answered problem 31A part A perfectly. Okay, let's continue. Part B is a depreciation entry. Um, so this is where we're going to buy a longer term asset and we're going to say it's losing value due to usage or wear and tear or age. And, uh, we'll have to track that ABC company purchases a vehicle on August 31st, 2024 for $12,000 cash. I, I know it's coming. So let's just do the journal entry for that sentence. And this is not an adjusting journal entry. Adjusting journal entries happen on our fiscal year end. August 31st was just like a normal transaction, right? We went to the car dealership. We bought a car. August 31st, 2024, we got a car, debit car, 12, 12,000 and credit cash, 12,000. Okay, we got a car for cash. Pretty normal journal entry. The vehicle is expected to be useful for 10 years, after which time it will have no residual value. We'll worry more about residual value in a future chapter, but the gist of residual value is after tw 10 years, we don't think we're going to get any money out of our car. It's how many money you can get out of the asset when you're done with it. And no residual value means we don't think we can get anything out of it. The company wishes to use straight line depreciation. That's the only method we're going to lo you learn this chapter. In a future chapter, we'll learn a couple of different methods for depreciation. Straight line being the easiest of the three. Okay, so uh, we have the makings of a good accounting question here. We got this $12,000 car. We think it's going to be useful for 10 years. After 10 years, it's going to be valueless. So what we have to do is, as the accountant, systematically reduce the value of the car, right? We have to say, okay, the value of the car is falling over the next 10 years. Straight line just means it's falling slow and steady for 10 years. Uh, there's different methods where we might, you know, accelerate that uh, depreciation or decelerate the depreciation, but ours is just steady straight line. Um, so what's the math on this? Well, we got a $12,000 asset, 10 year uh, life, means it's going to depreciate at a rate of $1,200 per year. And since there's 12 months in a year, that's going to give us depreciation at a rate of $100 per month. 
Uh, okay. So uh, our next relevant date is our year-end adjustment. And on December 31st, 2021, we need to say how much depreciation has happened here. How much value has our car lost? Not what value is our car, but how much value has been lost from our car? So the answer here is, well, how many months have gone by? Let's see, August doesn't count. So September, October, November, December, four months have gone by. So we said it was $1,200 a year. We've uh, used the asset for four twelfths of a year. So 1,200 times four twelfths means it's $400 in value lost on our car, or we could have done it this way, 100 bucks a month, four months, it's $400. So that's what we want to depreciate our car for. We want to say our car has lost $400 in value. The journal entry here, debit. Depreciation expense credit accumulated depreciation. Now, it's always the same journal entry when you're depreciation, depreciating an asset, December 31st, 2024. Um, it's always the same journal entry, debit depreciation expense, credit accumulated depreciation. You might have a specific account for each asset, but that's the way you do it. Um, what is accumulated depreciation? Because a common mistake here is students say, oh, my car lost value, let's credit car. Uh, this is not what we do. We have this special account specifically to keep track of the loss in value on our assets. Accumulated means how much has added up here. Depreciation means how much depreciation has added up here. And so our accumulated depreciation, our accumulated wear and tear on the car is $400. We call this account a contra asset account. If you go back to chapter one, we discussed this in problems one, three, and one, four. Um, Okay, so we've done the entry here. What's my car worth? Well, if we were to prepare financial statements, we would have accounts that look like this. We would say car, $12,000. AD, accumulated depreciation on my car, $400. Car net, the net book value of my car, $11,600. And that's the number I would tell my shareholders, right? I would say, oh, I got a car worth $11,600. That's the number that would land on the face of the balance sheet. Okay, so we've learned two types of adjustments so far. Prepaids, that's where you buy something, pay for something in advance, pay an expense in advance, and then use up its value over time, insurance being a great example of that. And then depreciation, that's where you buy an asset and again, use up its value over time. And the accountant has to make an estimate in both cases for the value. Okay. Accrued expenses is next. Accrued, accrued expenses mean expenses that have built up, but we haven't paid them yet. And we'll see next accrued revenues are revenues that built, have built up, but we haven't got paid yet. So accrued expenses, if we have an expense that's building up, but we haven't paid it yet, it's going to create a payable, right? It's like a cost that we haven't paid. It creates a liability. We owe somebody something. Accrued revenue, revenues that built up, but we haven't been paid yet, it's going to create a receivable. So those are just things to keep in mind. Okay, let's look at our accrued expense interest. On May 1st, 2024, ABC Company borrows $10,000 from the bank and signs a note payable. The debt carries annual interest of 6% and is repaid in full with interest on July 1st, 2025, so the next year. Record the journal entry for the initial borrowing, the year-end adjustment, and the repayment of the debt. Okay, so we borrow some money on May 1st, 2024. We borrow $10,000 from the bank. So when we borrow May 1st, 2024, we get cash, right? That's what we borrow. We borrow money. So debit cash, $10,000. Now, what do we give up here? Well, it's, the other side of this is we have a new liability. We have a note payable from the bank or a bank loan payable. We'll call it note payable because the question calls it note payable uh, for $10,000. So that's what happens on May 1st, 2024. Now, 
almost a year goes by, we have a fiscal year end of December 31st, 2024. We've got to say, what's happened up to this date? Has anything happened related to the note? And the answer is, yeah. The interest clock started ticking on day one. So our interest cost related to the note is 6% times 10,000. It's $600 per year. And if you break that down, that's 50 bucks a month, right? Divide that by 12, it's 50 bucks a month. Um, so it's 600 bucks a year in interest. And between May and December 31st, it hasn't been a full month, right? Uh, May to December, how many months is that? May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. I get eight months. So what we need to say is, how much interest has built up in that eight months time? Well, it's $600 times eight twelfths. I can do the math. That's $400 that's built up in interest that we haven't paid. So our journal entry for an accrued expense, in this case, it's interest because it's interest expense we debit interest expense to say interest costs are building up here 400 bucks and we credit interest payable right it's this liability we have to pay back the interest it's not an account payable an account payable is a typical transaction with a vendor we have interest payable with a bank or a lender right somebody who's lent us money so the account's called interest payable but it's a liability related to interest and you know the name kind of says it all okay the final uh couple of entries here well this takes us up to december 31st and it says we repay the note on july 1st 2025. the easiest way to do this is to actually say how much interest built up between december and july and the answer is well let's count the months january february march april may june six months so let's accrue six more months of interest. So our interest cost for six months would be, it was $600 for the year, 600 times six twelfths, it's 300 bucks. So let's accrue six more months of interest, debit interest expense, 300 credit interest payable, 300 to say, okay. We've got $300 more of interest. Now, how much do we have to pay back? Well, we got to pay back the full amount of the note, 10 grand, and we got to pay back $700 in interest. Now you might say, wait, it's 600, 6% interest. We borrowed the money for more than a year. I borrowed the money on May 1st, I'm paying back on July 1st, that's a year and two months. So I got to pay an extra couple of months of interest. And that brings me up to 700 to pay back, not 600 pay back so uh, I got to pay back the the note plus seven hundred dollars the total accrued interest I'm gonna pay back my uh, uh, lender ten thousand seven hundred dollars so on July 1st 2025 I credit cash for ten thousand the amount I owed seven hundred dollars uh, now my debits are one to note payable I no longer owe the guy money, right? So I owed them $10,000 up here. I don't owe them the money anymore. So I debit my payable to say, I don't owe you that money. $10,000 comes off the books, off the liabilities. And also interest payable. I'm paying you back all the interest that I said I owed you as well. And I said I owed you 400 here and I said I owed you 300 here. So 700 in total, I gotta get that off my books. I don't owe you the $700 in interest so that goes away okay we have done our accrued revenue or accrued expense pardon me and again it's an expense that's built up this is our adjustment right here this is our adjusting journal entry and the reason this is an adjustment is pretty simple we're going to prepare financial statements on this date the lender isn't calling me saying hey it's december 31st where's my money no they know they're not getting paid till july so the accountant just has to know, oh, I've got a liability here that's building up. I have to tell my shareholders about, otherwise, you know, I'm not telling them the truth. I have this extra $400 in, in interest liabilities that they need to know about. I'm going to adjust my accounts for this. Again, not a simple transaction. It is an adjustment. And that's what this chapter is all about. Continuing. 
Uh, Canadians, I just said all about. Canadians are famous for saying a boot. I don't think I have an accent. Do I have an accent? Comment it below if you think I said a boot, uh, like a Canadian does. Uh, I think I said about, like, properly. I don't know. I wonder if I sound funny to you. I sound beautiful in my own ears. <laughs> uh, a crude, I don't sound beautiful in my own ears, but I appreciate you uh, hanging in there from my funny sounding voice. Accrued revenues. Accrued revenues are revenues that have built up over time, but the money hasn't changed hands. We haven't been paid yet. So again, creates a receivable. As at December 31st, 2024, ABC Company had provided three months of consulting service to a client at a rate of a thousand bucks a month but had not yet billed the client or collected any money. Now, this is important. I've done the work, but I haven't billed them. Just because I haven't billed them, though, doesn't mean anything. It's when the work happens. The bill doesn't matter as much as the work. So I've done three months worth of work. I've earned three months worth of revenue at 1000 bucks a month. I've earned $3,000. I need to record that. So here's what I would do. Uh, on that date... I would, on, on my fiscal year end, December 31st, 2024, I would say, hey, I've done all this work. I've earned consulting revenue. So credit consulting rev. I don't have to wait to bill them. $3,000. I would debit accounts receivable. $3,000. They might debit a different account, a crude consulting revenue or something like that, but this is receivable. They might say, well, we'll wait till we bill to call it an account receivable. But from our perspective, this is a receivable. This is money owed to us, whether we've billed it or not. Um, on January 31st, 2025, we bill them for the fourth month of service. So on January 31st, 2024, we say, hey, we've earned another month of revenue. Debit AR, credit consulting rev for an extra thousand because we're going to build them for four thousand. And then on February 8th, they pay. Feb 8th, 2024. We got cash, right? They paid us what they owed us four thousand. And we credit AR for the full four thousand. Now, behind the scenes, accounting systems may treat this a little differently because they hadn't sent the bill out yet. They might call it something else. But from our perspective, this is just another receivable. This is money owed to us that even though it's not yet been billed. Okay, last but not least, unearned revenues. Unearned revenues are where we have gotten paid, but we haven't done any work. Oh. This is the best. If you can set up a business that works this way, and many do, this is the best place to be. Your clients are so eager for your service, they pay you before you did anything. They go, here's the money, just do the work eventually. When you get to us, get to us. Oh, what a marvelous place to be. Universities work that way, right? The student pays tuition before the university prof or anybody has lifted a finger. This is wonderful because, of course, if the student bails, well, the university has their money, right? If your client, if you're a business, your client bails, you've got their money. It's, it's much better than chasing them afterwards, right? If you are a tour company, right? You run tours. Way better to have their money in advance than you take them on the tour. And guess what? If they don't have a good time or whatever, you've already got their money in your pocket. It's, it's not like you're going to fight them over the bill. They're going to have to fight you for their money, not the other way around. So this is, this is where you want to be. Unearned revenues, again, you've been paid for work you haven't done. Whew, great. A client prepays ABC Company on November 1st, 2024 for five months of consulting service from November through the end of March. So great position to be. Our clients paid us on November 1st for the next five months. Uh, the company pays $15,000. So, you know, $15,000 for five months of work means they're paying us. My math is terrible. $3,000 per month is what that amounts to. ABC Company earns money evenly over the life of the project and has fulfilled its obligations up to December uh, 31st. It says record the journal entry for November 1st and the year-end adjustment. Okay, so on November 1st, we get paid, right? This guy gives us money, so obviously there's a transaction here. November 1st, 2024, we get cash. And our cash amount uh, uh, is $15,000. The credit here is to unearned 
consulting revenue. Now let's be clear about what this is. When I get paid for work I didn't do, even though it's called, it's got revenue in the name, it's not revenue. This is a liability. It means I've got to pay you back, not with money, but I got to pay you back by doing consulting work. I got to pay you back with, with service. I owe you $15,000 worth of service. Um, but again, a nice position to be in, even though it's a liability. So debit, cash, credit, unearned consulting revenue, $15,000. So on December 31st, 2024, we've done some work. How much of their money have I earned? Well, if it was three grand a month, and we've been working from November 1st to December 31st, that's two months, November, December, uh, I've earned two months worth of revenue, and three grand a month, I've earned $6,000. Two times 3,000 is $6,000. Uh, I've earned six grand of this money. So I credit consulting revenue. So yeah, I've earned money, $6,000, and I debit the liability. I debit unearned consulting revenue. You say it's not unearned anymore. This money has been earned. Debit unearned consulting rev $6,000. And there we have it. We have recorded our transaction. Um, okay, one last note to leave this on. And uh, this little chart is something I put up on the board and it might be useful to you, it might not, but this is just a way to keep track of these five types of adjustments, kind of what we gotta do. Uh, students struggle on this. When I give this in a midterm or a final, this is a question that generally is below a normal question. Uh, like answered worse than a normal question. And the shame of it is, it's actually pretty formulaic. Like it's, it's we always do the same stuff over and over again. A lot of accounting is routine work and this is very much routine. Um, and so I'm gonna give you a little cheat sheet or a little template that you can use just to help you study for this a little bit better. And I'll, I'll do that here is at the bottom of the page. Let me get some empty space here. Uh, Okay, I'm going to do this by hand, and my handwriting is pretty messy, but we'll do our best. So we've learned five types of adjustments, right? We've learned prepaid expenses, which of course are not expenses at all. They're assets. We've learned, actually, let me just do the uh, prepaid first before I list the other ones out. So prepaid expenses, there's always going to be a setup. And the setup is this, we'll always have purchased something in advance, right? The idea of a prepaid expense is it's a cost you pay for in advance. So buy insurance for the year, or you pay a few months of rent, you buy some supplies before you use them. Uh, so the journal entry is always gonna be the same. We're always gonna debit prepaid something, some sort of prepaid asset, like prepaid insurance or prepaid rent, credit cash or credit AP, often it's cash. Now, at the year end, we're going to need to do an adjustment. We'll have an adjusting journal entry, and the journal entry is always the same. Debit, whatever that asset is, the expense related to it. So, you know, debit insurance expense, if it's insurance, or debit rent expense, or supplies expense. And then we credit our prepaid asset, whatever that was. So if it was prepaid insurance, prepaid rent, but it's always the same two entries. Like when I ask these questions, it's always the same two entries there. You just got to calculate how many months and things like that, but it's always the same entries. Um, and, and I got to think in just about any textbook, not just me. Uh, okay, next we learned about uh, depreciation. Setup's always the same. At some point in the past, at some point in time, a company has bought an asset, right? I'll call it a long-term asset, like equipment, building, a vehicle, something like this that depreciates. Uh, credit, cash, or mortgage, or bank loan. It could be a myriad of credits. The credit here doesn't matter in our description. I'll just say cash here. The journal entry for the adjustment, always the same. Debit, depreciation, expense, and credit accumulated depreciation on that asset, whatever the asset is. Always the same. Next, 
uh, we learned accrued expenses. With an accrued expense, there's no need for a setup, but at the year end, there's always some sort of expense being built up. Remember an accrued expense is, it's a cost that's being built up that I haven't paid yet. So we de uh, debit some sort of an expense, we credit some sort of a payable. Sorry, I see that's behind my head. I'll zoom out so you can see all of these in a minute. Last, not last, second to last, accrued revenues. Accrued revenues are revenues that have built up over time, but the money hasn't changed hands yet. So we're gonna debit some sort of a receivable and credit some sort of a revenue every time, right? It's We're earning money that we haven't been paid for. So it always creates a receivable. Interest receivable, potentially, accounts receivable, some other receivable. Last but not least, unearned revenues. For unearned revenues, 100% of the time, at some point, we've been paid cash without doing any work. So we're always going to debit cash, credit, unearned, blank revenue, unearned consulting revenue, unearned tuition revenue, some sort of unearned revenue. Then at the end of the year, we'll have earned the money. So we're going to credit some sort of revenue and debit the unearned it is no longer unearned. That's the idea. We're earning their revenue. So let me zoom out a bit here so it can all fit on the screen without my big head blocking. Um, so there we have it. These are our five types of adjustments. Let's see. I don't know if this is going to be useful or not, but we're going to try my beautiful straight lines. You know what? There's a ruler tool in here, but I think it's just as good. Go freehand. There we are. This table I find to be really useful. I hope you do too. Uh, it just helps us to do our adjusting journal entries. So if you found this video useful, please don't be shy in terms of sharing it with friends, telling other people about it, where there's lots more problems to practice. And as always, if you're watching this on YouTube, it's a huge favor to me if you can hit the thumbs up. If you want to hit the subscribe button too, that's very helpful in telling the YouTube algorithm that these videos are, are good ones. All right. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.